Hello, thanks for being in a new video. This time I have an unboxing of the OnePlus 12. Let's get started. This device was recently announced and also recently arrived in Mexican lands. In this case, its announced price for Mexico has been 23,999 pesos. On the screen, you see the reference price in dollars. It is quite a high price. But fortunately, in promotion, they are giving it at 18,999 pesos, which is, I think, a more adjusted price. On the screen, you see the reference price in dollars. I think the promotion is considerably good, taking into account that it has 512 GB of storage. Its official distributors in Mexico are Mercado Libre and Amazon, so come on, join me to know what's inside this box. On the back, it only confirms that it is the model with 16 GB of RAM, 512 GB of storage, and is the flowy emerald color edition. In this case, the first thing we find is a letter that says, Thank you for being a decade together, says OnePlus. And here even comes the name of several users who are surely fans of OnePlus since its inception. A nice touch for those who have been part of the OnePlus community. And it is curious that in this case, the cable comes inside an envelope. Usually here comes a sleeve and documentation. But in this case, it seems that only the cable comes. Well, we found the cable that comes with USB-A on one side and USB-C on the other side. The traditional OnePlus red cable with white colored heads. But in this case, coiled in a way that takes up as little space as possible. Next, we'll find the usual documentation. I call all this the usual paperwork, and we also have the tool to extract the tray. In addition to that, we include stickers in the purest Apple style to stick in the car or somewhere else and to show that we have a OnePlus device. And also like Apple, as you can see, there is no charger included in the box. A rather controversial decision, although apparently in some regions it is going to arrive with charger included. It is a rather strange decision. In Mexico, if you are one of the first to buy the device, they will give you a 100 watt charger with SuperVoke charging. So, I think it's a bad decision not to put the charger. Especially because we all know that even though Samsung and Apple do that, it's actually a decision that annoys users. So, the charger you're going to have to buy separately. And finally, we come to the device. Let's take it out of this packaging. And look at nothing else, the back cover is super nice, a finish that reminds me a bit of the P60 Pro, although in this case in a green color. The camera module has a fully reflective design, but it blends in with the matte design of the body of the device. Honestly, I find it to be one of the best looking cell phones out there. Let's get it powered up while I put all this away and then I'll be back to give you all the details on this phone. I've already got the device set up here, so let's get to know its specs. Honestly, I'm finding it to be too good an alternative for anyone who wants a premium device, but isn't willing to spend as much money as the other devices cost. Its thickness is 9.15 millimeters and weighs 220 grams. Like any high-end device, it's not going to be ultra thin and ultra light. So yes, it does feel a little bit heavier than the average device, but at the same time that makes it feel like an even more premium experience. While the thickness may possibly cause dissatisfaction for several, it is offset by a good battery, which I think is what many of us have been asking for. I think most of us want bigger batteries and not thinner devices. The screen is 6.82 inches in diagonal. It's a huge screen with Quad HD Plus resolution, 3168 by 1440 pixels. It reaches a density of 510. So it's a super detailed screen as well. It has AMOLED technology, so it gives us very good color, very good contrast, 120 hertz in its refresh rate. Its peak is 4,500 nits. That's when you're showing obviously some HDR content and you've got the brightness on max. But what's interesting here is that it also has Pro XDR technology. And look at how it looks when it's off and then when it's on. 
This means that the screen is going to be able to output more brightness in some specific areas to make it look much more realistic in the output. It's definitely spectacular how the pictures look here. In addition, the screen comes protected with Gorilla Glass Victus 2. I think that's a good thing. It gives us a good level of resistance. Of course, it has stereo sound, it has fingerprint reader inside the screen, and the front camera is 32 megapixels with f2.4 aperture, although it has fixed focus. So I think the front camera is not as spectacular as the one we can find in some other devices. But here I did some tests. Before taking the picture, it still doesn't look very well optimized, but after taking the picture thanks to the HDR processing, we have a good balance of lights and shadows. It even looks a picture with a very good level of detail. So the only downside of this camera is that it doesn't have autofocus. So probably if you're too close to the camera, you're going to come out a little bit out of focus. But we'll get to that later in the video review. For now, I think it's a spectacular picture. Also, selfies are also supported with the Pro XDR feature I showed you a moment ago. The rear photographic system is amazing. Moreover, it is described in the camera module. We have the 23mm f1.6 camera considered as the main camera. Then we will have the 14mm ultrawide camera with aperture f2.2 and at the bottom we have the periscope camera with 70mm and aperture f2.6 that is optical zoom approximately 3x and it also gives us zoom inside the sensor. So it can give us 6x while maintaining optical quality. Definitely it is a super advanced photographic system of very good quality and comes in collaboration with Hasselblad. The results of the photographs I took as a test are spectacular. This is the ultra-wide camera that also offers us something positive. Perhaps a dynamic range, not as high as what we see in the main camera. Especially in the darker areas. But here we have the result with the main camera. Then applying a little zoom. And the zoom has been spectacular. Notice how in this case we can go up to 30x while maintaining supreme quality. Definitely, I think the level of detail is exaggerated in 30x. The maximum is 120x. Although I consider that the result here is already a bit forced or artificial. But believe me, the zoom is extremely powerful even though it doesn't seem to have that much. This is due to the high resolution of the sensor. In fact, I forgot to tell you the resolutions. I only told you the details of the lenses. The main sensor is 50 megapixels and is Sony's new Litia 808. The periscope camera sensor is 64 megapixels, made by Omnivision. And the ultra-wide sensor is 48 megapixels. It's a Sony IMX 581. So we have three high-resolution sensors that in total give us a camera with excellent detail. In addition, the device does support video recording at up to 8K at 24 frames per second, albeit only with the main camera. But in 4K at 60 frames per second, it allows us to record using all lenses. The battery is 5400 milliamps, although it is divided in two. And usually when it's split in two, it gives us a little bit lower performance than expected. But we will put this battery to the test at a later date. For now, it seems to have a capacity that goes far beyond what other competitors give. It supports 100 watt charging, although the charger is not included in the box. It also supports wireless charging and reversible wireless charging, which are two features coming in flagships. Confirming that OnePlus is betting big on this proposition. It comes with 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM with 4 virtual gigabytes, although you can still expand it up to another 12 gigabytes more. Virtual RAM, honestly, on OnePlus doesn't seem that spectacular to me. We'll test it either way to see how well it can perform. But the storage is a complete spectacle. Having 512 gigabytes in this category is undoubtedly very good. And on top of that, it's UFS 4.0. So it's going to give us very fast read and write speeds. So it's a device that we could say is one of the most powerful devices that we're going to find today. And finally, the processor is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. That is the latest from Qualcomm. So we're going to end this video by doing a benchmark test to more or less get an idea of the performance that this device can get because it has several cooling options, several OnePlus adaptations through the software to make everything go even smoother. So let's see what this processor is capable of in the benchmark test. Although remember that the real performance we will see when we do the full video review. And we have the score here. In single core, I find it curious that it came out a little low, but in multi-core, it scored 4,699 points, definitely showing all the muscle that it has. It's going to be a very powerful device.
And it also feels very cool. It doesn't even feel a little bit warm after finishing this test, which could become demanding. For the moment, we've come to the end of this video. But remember, we will also have the video review where we will see a lot more details. I hope you liked it. If you did, you know you can let us know. And see you next time.